me show you the other very popular thing that you know everyone wants to see. And I've demonstrated this one before, but uh, this is, I think, a super powerful one. One of the ways to make that I think is easiest, and I've promoted this, and I've said that I think this is easiest, I still believe it's true, is to, when you're doing narrowband imaging, if you want to make a narrowband uh, image that is comprised of three colors, I think it's easy to make uh, a two color image, like an HOO image, for example, that's what this is, of the Rosette Nebula. And then you can add a third color easily with image blend. And that's what I'd like to demonstrate. Now, I am not saying that the color mapping I'm going to do is what is required. That's not the point. The point is that if you wanted to make an SHO image, if you wanted that hydrogen alpha to be green, God bless you, whatever, right? You can use the method that I'm about to show. And I think it's an easier way to blend in that information. Now, I happen to not like green in my narrow band images, just the way I am. So I do like to put a little yellow for the third band. So this is HOO here. And then I have the third band, which is the S2 component. And it's still in its grayscale version form here. Now I have stretched the image in such a way that it's not overly bright. And you gotta, and that's true of the HOO image as well, because if they're overly bright, once you start putting together two overly bright images, it's gonna be even brighter. So that's a kind of a, an important idea. It's almost always true for anything that we're blending together. You just can't make them too bright to begin with when you're putting more than one image together. And uh, how you put these together is in the following way. We go back to image blend. So here, here. Always reset. I have HOO rosette. And then I have the S2 rosette here, right? So what we need to do is kind of two operations, actually. One operation is we need to colorize the S2 information to whatever color we want. And then we need to blend it. So one of the nice things is that one of the filters that you can use here is color and it's spelled in the way that Mike likes for all of us people that have uh, no longer speak that language. Um, you can adjust the color to whatever hue you might want. And I'm gonna keep the saturation very high at one. So I might come over here and make it, you know, whatever. Some color. I'm trying to make it a little more yellow. Okay, there it is. Kind of some yellow color, right? And then uh, the other thing to do is just uh, screen it together. And now I've incorporated the S2 component in here. But that might not be all you want to do, right? Because remember, we can threshold both of these images. We can take out a little bit of the background of the uh, HOO image if we want. Or, and this is where things get nice and interesting, is we can control how much of the S2 is incorporated here. Let's say that we didn't want S2, where it, because S2 overlaps the, uh, the hydrogen alpha um, in a, in, it's not one-to-one, -one, but it overlaps in a lot of regions here, right? So we're just kind of modifying the H alpha to go from a red, which I kind of liked, to now more of an orange, which is okay. But what I really want is I want the highlights of where the S2 is brightest. Those are the regions that I want to turn orange, not everywhere, right? And so if I instead threshold it by raising the black, uh, black point here, see, I can choose how much of that S2 comes in. And then if I want to, once I've chosen that, if I want to, now I can increase the highlights of the S2 and make it even stronger in those regions. And I can do that all by manipulating these sliders easily. And I have the feedback here to, to see exactly what's going on. So that's what I wanted to demonstrate. And it's super easy to do to incorporate a third color. Uh, I'm going to show you one more thing because I think it's important, but I'm not going to show you the total answer. This is just a hint and you'll just need to go get some of my instructional videos. You see how I've made this new image here called image blend, right? 
Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this and I'm going to load that new image that I just made in the tool. So I have a copy of the image itself. This is a very important way to imagine um, working with images. Sometimes you're working two different images. Sometimes you're working on the image itself. And one of the interesting operations you can do here that often can be helpful. Now it's not gonna be helpful everywhere in the image. I'm just gonna point out that sometimes you want darker colors. And what happens if I now take the two images and I multiply them together? Look at those colors. Come on, look at that. Those are fantastic colors. If I could figure out a way, of course, I know how, to incorporate those colors where it's too bright, and then still have everything else bright, then I'll have the image that I want. And so there are many different ways, again, of taking advantage of image blend to get you to where you wanna be. Ways that are not easy to otherwise do currently in Fix Insight.